Welcome everybody to today's Thursday Live. I am Denise Arminio. I am certified motion code, body code, group energy facilitator and genius biofeedback practitioner. And I am so happy everybody could join us and be here. Today we're going to be working with hormones and um, we also have Claire McIntyre here to assist and help answer any questions that you may have in the chat room. And Claire, you want to say hello? Hello, everybody. I'm support orientation in the background. So, yeah. So um, I don't have a volunteer for today. So if someone would like to volunteer, um, whoever wants to post in the chat, um, we can unmute you and we can start today's demo. Anyone? No volunteers? Unusual. Oh, hi, Ruth. Thank you. Hold on. Let me, um, let me unmute you. And maybe you could turn your video on too. All please. right. Is that okay? Yep, that's great. I'm just adding your name here. Why is my, there we go. There you go. In 10, I, what's your birthday? Uh, 10, 16, 67. A Libra. Oh, 67. Yeah. I'm the 27th. Oh, you are? Uh-huh. The Libras. I'm not a Libra, though. Oh, that's right. You're just over. I'm a Scorpio. Oops. I, I, I jumped the gun there. I put in your information. I, um, I just hit it to the next screen. But so before we start, let me just get your screen shot right here. Okay, so why don't you tell me a little bit on um, what you would like to work with today? What, where, what ails you? Do you have pain, physical pain anywhere or emotional pain that you want to work with? It's um, mostly actually, I, um, I've been using the genius for a little while and it's really helped a lot um, uh, for some things like morning tiredness and all, but what happened is um, about approximately three years ago, I got up in the middle of the night and I fell down like two steps and I fell really hard, but I didn't hit my head or anything. But um, unfortunately, like when I, in the morning, I was like, wow, what's the matter with my vision? And so it really negatively affected my vision. And I've been for three years trying to figure out like, it's gotten better, but um, it's, I used to have like perfect vision and now it's like blurry. I have floaters, I'm sensitive to light. Um, I do body code and uh, motion code too. It always comes up hydration. So in my doctor's like, well, you have dry eyes so that aggravates it. Anyway, that's that's kind of all I know, but it's it's very slowly over three years getting better, but it's crazy that it's, I mean, it didn't even hit my head. It's crazy. I, and the first year was horrible. I just, it was, it was like a, being in a, a cartoon or a snow globe or something, all the floaters and the sensitivity to light. So have you tried anyhow, clearing around the trauma? That. Sorry. Have you tried clearing around the trauma? Oh, falling or yeah. oh, no. Because, mm -mm. you know, anything can cause anything. Right. So, so um, anyway, so so how would you rate your vision now on a scale of one to ten? I mean, zero to 10, like how oh, bad? Like a, a five, maybe a six. Like, yeah. Okay. And do you have any pain anywhere? Mm, no, I, I just, I always have um, ache in my, through my entire body, <laughs> which I thought was hormonal, but. 
Okay. And so how would you rate the, the ache in your body at, at a 10, 10 being severe? Uh, again, five or six. Okay. Okay. So is that basically what, anything else? Um, no. And with that pain, I have, um, I can't make this with my hands anymore. I don't know if that's, that's like the stiffness in there. Okay. Yep. Those are, I think, are the three main things. Okay. So I've added that in and um, let's, I'm going to hit begin on the bottom to go to the next screen. Okay. And so here is where we're going to add um, your voice and um, I will count you down. You can say three, I'll say three, two, one, begin, and then say your full name. And then A, E, I, O, U, the vowels, um, repeat them until the 15 seconds is up. And just don't like rush through the A, like just give it like an A, B, C. I mean, you know what I mean <laughs> with the vowels. Hey, a question too, should I say then what I wanna work on or no? You you could give an intention, but um, I, I it's also important to get the vowels in there. Oh, okay, so I'll go slow on the vowels. Yeah. Um, okay, so three, two, one, begin. A, E, I, O, U, Ruth, Daniela, Pierce, A, E, I, O, U. Great. Now I did enter your, your last name is F R E I. Yeah, I got married recently. So I kind of go back. I've been using Pierce now, but, um, I think on everything else it's Fry. Does that matter? Or? Well, is that your legal name though? I just want to, yeah, use it. it's now okay. legal. Pierce, yeah. Okay, great. Um, okay. So now the next thing, um, that we can do is on the bottom left, it says voice harmonics. I always like to try to play this. I know that it doesn't, you, it, you can't hear it very good on the Zoom, but um, the voice harmonics, what that is, is it takes what you just recorded and it turns it into a frequency. So it's kind of like a homeopathic to yourself. So I'm just going to play it here. Did you hear it? Just to hear like tapping every few seconds. Yeah, that that's what it was. That that okay. was okay. So now I'm just going to hit next on the bottom right. Analyzing right now. And we can hit continue. Okay, since I already took your little screenshot, I'm going to hit on the, the, the click on the image here and hit existing photo. And that will bring me to my photos and I've uploaded you. <laughs> just hit begin analysis on the bottom. Okay, so is there um, an affirmation that you would like to add to this um, dance? Um, yeah, and hey, Denise, this happened last week too. I noticed as soon as you do, do that part, your voice goes a lot lower. It's hard to hear you. I think when you uh, run, is it better now? No, -uh. I remember last week we kind of had a little chat on it and it was- Yeah, it's usually, but- I thought the volume went down maybe after I, um, is Oh, do this. Now? Yeah. yeah. It, it must be when the, so what would you like me to put in that box? And then I'll type, uh, it. in that box, let's put, oh, uh, um, I just, I, I, sorry. I can't, I can't get it back right now unless I go. All the way back. Um, I, uh, how about I have perfect vision now? Yeah, I, because because I oh can't you did our, that's out fine. for the sound yeah. I can't get that box. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so uh, my apologies. No problem. 
Um, I just want to go and add my libraries to you. So what I'm doing right now is I hit add, add to client and now this pop-up comes up and I'm going to hit select all and okay. And because I have some also have some master branch libraries, I'm going to click on the master branch on the bottom right that's in blue. And I, the same thing here is I'm going to add to client and select all and hit okay. And Denise, those are already automatically in your library. You always have to add those? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you no, that depends. That depends. It depends on if you, uh, when you um, sign on, when you first go to the libraries, it will ask you if you want to assign all the libraries to all your clients. Typically, I always used to do that because it just alleviates, alleviates this extra step. But because I have so many libraries, it takes a really long time for me to sync if hmm. all my clients have every one of my libraries. So I just, um, I don't sync them all to everybody else. So. Oh, so if you buy from the beginning the, the big package that has all libraries in it, you don't have to do that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is when you log out, like when you log out and log back in, it will ask you then, do you want to assign all your li libraries to all your clients? Oh, okay. If you don't, I have like 2000 libraries. So when I sync, when I log out and sync back in, it will take a really long time to sync because I have so many users that have all the library, like all 2000 libraries. So it takes a long time for me. Got I it. I personally recommend that when it asks you that question that you assign to all, unless you have the situation where I have. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So, um, and then when you hit assign to all, everything will um, be assigned to them. I believe that's true for the master libraries, right, Claire? Um, or do people need to go into master? Is that completely separate? I'll have to check that. I'll get back Completely to you. Completely separate. One one of the questions that I would have had is how you identify when you go back to your libraries is how do you identify what is a master branch as well, opposed only to standard library? It, it doesn't break it up by like libraries and master branch, only by the title. That's why a lot of times when I create my master branch libraries, I put MB before MB it. In it. Perfect. Yeah. Because then it, it's going to alphabetically like just, um, you know, all under all MB. Together. Perfect. And you can see I wasn't, I haven't done that on all of them, but, and then if you get master branch libraries from someone else, if they haven't done it, then you kind of have to remember the title for it. So, um, but that's but but uh, Denise, just to be clear, that's only if you bought extra because I don't mine doesn't show that when I just go through it just it, it just runs a program like you. But this I don't or do I should I go in also and grab all libraries? No, or? I think you would know. Like when you upload libraries, it would say like um, master branch library share, and then it would have a code. So if if you get that email that says master branch library share you have to go to master branch to up to import you see where it says um uh yeah here yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where you would put that code okay um, and for example if i were to buy a blood pressure panel then that's how i'd have to pull it in no not necessarily sorry i don't mean to confuse you it oh, okay. because someone could set could, someone could send you the blood pressure panel and and just send it as a library share bulk code okay you have to specifically um you know set it List up in master branch master branch so okay. and it's easy to do like I, I could just if everybody was interested in seeing it for a minute i can just show you so if you're in um and and there's created and shared so you also have to you know, look at that. We're in created right now. So these are my created master branch. But if I went into shared, I only have a few that's been sent to me from other people. Okay. Okay. So if I were going to create, I can make, I could set up a name, like, I don't know, um, let's just say, uh, 
one, two, three testing is always good. I'm just going to say Thursday live. Okay. So now I have that. So now I can decide what libraries I want to put into that. So, yeah. um, you know, maybe I want to put in my hydration. So if this is all the four libraries in my hydration. And then but I, you had to buy those or, or receive them somehow. I create for those. These are all ones that I created right now. Got it. Okay. If oh, I so it doesn't, it's not just that you buy, you know, how you can go and buy them and, and upload them. That's you're saying, no, you can also do your own menu, uh, your own. Right. So, I mean, you can make a master. Uh, you can, I can make a master branch with libraries that I received from someone else. Right. I just meant, you know how you can go and buy, you know, you can buy them because I have the basic program. You can, that's also on this page that's lo uploading them or no, they're automatically in if I buy them. Yeah, they would, they, they would be in um, here under libraries. And then, right, but what I have to upload those if I buy extra libraries. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then you would go import libraries here. Got it. So, so and if, if I wanted to send you or someone else libraries, I would go to export and then it. put the person's genius email and then whatever um, libraries I wanted to send. But I can only send libraries that I've created. You can't, you can't um, share libraries that someone sent you or that you've purchased. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, um, I hope that was helpful for everybody. Yeah. Um, Barbara, you're saying for Master Branch, I have to add mine and shared individually. I'm not sure I'm following you exactly or if you're asking me a question on that. If, if you are, you can just to add that back in. Sorry, Barbara. Anyway, I'm just going to hit begin analysis here. Okay, so let's start for all those that um, are interested, maybe haven't purchased the Genius, and maybe they're just on a trial and um, are trying to understand the Genius a little better. I just wanted to touch base on what these numbers on the right-hand side mean. So the Genius uses um, a value system uh, in a number range from zero to 777. And uh, there are four different ranges, and those four ranges are related to um, the colors here. So zero to 100. Um, is uh, is represented by the color blue. And blue represents chronic energetic disturbances. Or in Chinese medicine, you could look at it like stagnant energy. Um, and again, um, it's energetic disturbances that we're looking at. Then the next green uh, picks up from 101 and goes to 405. Uh, 450 and yellow is about 451 to 688 and then the yellow the red range is 689 to 777 and that energetic disturbance um, on the red values is going to be acute energetic disturbances meaning that it's it's happening now in the present chinese medicine might see this as heat or inflammation so basically, if you were clearing blues, the next progression blue would go would be into red. It may not go from blue to yellow or green, um, just because it's going to go from a chronic state to a more present state, if that makes sense. And again, it's just important to point out that working with the genius, it's not a diagnostic tool in an allopathic sense. It is um, just showing us energetic disturbances. So if you think of like a balance or a scale, red and the red and the blues are just, they're out of balance. And to one extreme being um, that the blue is out of balance for a longer period of time than the red is. 
So I hope that is clear for everybody and makes sense. And I just wanted to welcome Deb, Dr. Debbie Drake. She's here with us today. So thank you, mm -hmm. for Debbie. Um, okay, so on the left hand side, right next to all the um, different like library titles under your category of mind um, or body, you see the drop down arrows and that's indicating that if you tap on the, the line itself, there's more information below that. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out after the genius does its uh, analysis, it's going to order the different categories in the order of priority. So in other words, the genius is showing mind up top. That means it's finding the most disturbance in the mind area. And that would be like, maybe where you should start your focus if you didn't have anything specific to look at. Um, and before we get too far, I just want to get grab your aura picture. So we can get it before we run any scan. So to get your aura picture, I just clicked on aura. I hope everybody saw that. If not, I can go back. But I'm going to hit begin analysis here. Are you hearing me okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, oh, that's pretty. So I'm just gonna take a picture of this for you. So we're seeing some purples, pinks, some greens in here. It's not a bad aura. I would like to see in this middle section and even down on the bottom, it's kind of dull and kind of dirty looking. I would look at that kind of as a little bit of stagnant energy down here. I typically don't go into more of an analysis than that. Um, I just really look to see that we're getting bright, vibrant colors. Each color would really represent a different um, chakra color. So you can get in more depth if you wanted to. When I'm working on a uh, session, I just want to see that we're clearing some of that stagnant energy and that the energy is moving. So that's basically um, what I look for in there. Um, so now let's just go back. So the next thing I would do is um, I like to, and um, if you've listened to Dr. Debbie in her uh, live yesterday, she talked about um, working with minerals and some uh -huh. other things. And I've also been working with those as well. So I'm just gonna go quickly to minerals here and I'm gonna add them all to the main hole tray at the bottom. And I can do that by um, grabbing all red items, all yellow items, all green and all blue instead of dragging and dropping them all individually. So I'm just going to run those all right now, and I'm going to run them for one minute. I have to hit oh. a big analysis down here. Funny, I, I also listened. That was a great uh, program on Tuesday you guys had, and I, I did the same thing this morning. I worked, I went, I think, to functional zone considerations for minerals. So, yeah, you can do that as, mm -hmm. as well. I don't usually... Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. I just did it, so. <laughs> There's a big interest. We can always work on that um, one week on one of these Thursdays. I honestly, I don't use it that frequently myself. Um, and really the only, the reason why I don't is because I seem to get good results without using it. But if you seem to like be really stuck and you're not making any uh, progress, then the two different areas you can certainly look at are entangled insights and the functional zones. What is the difference between the two, Denise? Entangled, they're, they're looking at different things. Entangled insights has its own like database in it. And it's going to look at like the one item that you click off, but not from this screen. Um, and then you can see like what, what the probability is of homeopathics or emotions affecting that one 
specific thing. It does take time to work with it. So unless I really have a specific need for it, I, mm. I don't go in there just because it's more limiting. And then functional zones is working with different functional zones. Um, so you had a 60% rectification. That's really great on working with these minerals. So I'm going to back out of here now. Um, and the next thing I'm, I like to um, look at, it, and I'm gonna empty the main hold tray for a minute. I'm going to go to um, spiritual protection. These are the two mm. libraries I always like to work with first. So again, I'm gonna run, begin analysis. And usually when you see psychic attack come up, I, I try to mention this all the time, usually means you have some kind of physical pain someplace. That's normally how you'll see it represented. Another thing that you usually always want to work with is grounding because that's going to help you. If, if you're not present and grounded, you're either going to be anxious or depressed. So grounding is really, really important. So I'm just going to select all here for. Um, these and that's interesting because a psychic attack comes up every day. Does it? Yeah. Cutting the cord did until yesterday for like two weeks. But yeah, psychic attack always Have comes you ever up. tried just running psychic attack then and run it until you get it and until it's not high anymore? No. How do you do that? Just drop it. You just don't select the other items you just singly select psychic attack and then do functional zone or do or no, drop i'll show it. you in a minute okay interesting though you said i should try working around the trauma that uh, the emotional came up Or mind, I should say. Okay, so you have 61% rectification. Again, that's great. Let's hit rescan up top. So psychic attack is not showing anymore. And actually it's showing as low right now. Excellent. So I I wouldn't personally I wouldn't do anything with that right Got now. It. If you were to run it again and you saw it, what I'm, what I was talking about you doing is just hitting psychic attack and run it for a minute. Like, let's say that said it was high and you can run it again and hope that it would move down to medium or low. And you just throw it in the, in the main hold tray and run it. No, you could just run it from here right now. Like, oh. you could, like if let's, let's not do psychic attack for a minute. Let's see. Let's like do dark, dark forces. forces. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so up. I'm just gonna let's just run it for like 30 seconds. Good. So now you're only getting this frequency, you're not getting anything else. Okay. So whatever your rectification is on dark forces is the probability of that clearing. Oh, that's great. Okay. Now there is you know, when we talk about a clearing, there's also, you know, we're clearing things from our energy field and from our subconscious. So that's not like an exact science. Some, your subconscious is only going to reveal things to you as it's ready to reveal and when it feels safe to reveal it. So even if it said it was 100% clear, it doesn't mean necessarily that it won't show up again tomorrow. Right. Now your subconscious may say, hey, you know what? I'm ready to go a little deeper. So now let's work on it again. Hmm. So just to get a little bit of depth in what you're looking at with um, the responses here. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, so you had 46% rectification on it. So let's just out of curiosity, see what happens. So did it go, it went, actually went up to the top. <laughs> <laughs> so there must still be some stuff to work on there. We're not going to stay. We're not going to get yeah. stuck here right now, but you know, that might be one way for, um, 
the dark but, yeah that shows so up it's the only it's the only high right now and denise that shows up every day what i for under the under that but you may want to work on that because okay you'd be surprised how much working in here because when i say anything can cause anything when you <laughs> have these can influence like some of the physical stuff that's going on right and you may not know why so you know it, i i would say check that out um but let's go okay. back now um and so then the third thing um i'd like to look at is going into the general overview and you go there by clicking on the system overview right. and then hit we could hit begin analysis down on the bottom so now this is going to show you the general overview shows you everything from that um system overview page and it's like expanding everything so everything all the when you go a little bit deeper it now reorganizes all the different libraries in um, numerical order so you can see what your top highs are and what your you know low lows are so for you it's showing some of your meridians um it's showing your liver is um stress oh, today. now again this is their red so it's acute it's present it's what's going on today with you um some sacred geometry amino acids again some meridians now we can hit general overview again and we're going to see the bottom view mm -hmm. now interesting i've never seen this happen <laughs> before but the the libraries so like everything that's in the libraries that i've had it is showing up as being a chronic thing for you so there must be something in the libraries that um is important to work on for you so we will look at that today sorry you mean just everything or <laughs> well it's using libraries generally so you know hmm every word has its own frequency so the word library that the frequency of the word libraries is is your body needs for some reason so i might i might actually just throw that down here now so we don't forget about it okay. I, I don't know why that's showing up and i mean we could take that further and look what's in my libraries but it could just be that frequency that like mm -hmm. the word libraries create generates that you need for some reason um and then you have some herbs some sensitivities here minerals neurotransmitters so let's just move the timer here and um put this on zero and we're going to run this just for um like 30 seconds just because we're doing a lot of talking today <laughs> So now the quick balance, just for anybody that's new, is going to run all the reds and blues. I didn't have to drag anything into the main whole tray for this. Hey, Denise, how is this page, the general overview page, different than that main page if we were to hit quick balance? Is it the same thing or we just can see it well, better? Because the quick balance is going to um run the frequencies of the reds and the blues on the specific page that you're on so if you were on the system overview page it would only be right would be running the reds and the blues of like the library names of only those names like the 27. oh and this is more comprehensive the general Correct. overview oh, okay so better to run on this page then Okay, so you had 30% rectification. I still think that's great because we may not be going in and out of these libraries in the yeah. in itself. So, you know, we're we're looking at a good amount of stuff. Now, based on what we talked about briefly about possibly trauma, the first, I think it's really important to talk about emotions here, brain anatomy because you hit your head, right? So, 
I didn't hit it, but I guess I gave myself a bad whiplash and, um, well, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, if you think of your head in like, or an egg in a glass jar, right. You know, if it's, if it's moving forward in any way, or you may not actually hit the outside, but the inside can, can hit the inside with that movement. So you can, so I'm going to put all areas of the, um, brain in here. Uh-huh. And I'm also going to just add brain anatomy since brain anatomy showed as what as red. And then I'm going to go to emotions for you. And I'm going to add all the reds and all the blues. Um, I'm not going to add those other ones. Oopsies. And I'll add the, the flower essences here. Why do you add flower essences? Flower essences are really great for um, breaking up emo- um, like trapped emotions. Hmm. So a lot of times you need like a solution to break up stagnant energy, which is why you'll see me go to different types of flower essences or gems or essential oils or herbs, because you can look at them as solutions, or you can go to salts, um, different things that the body needs. Um, But so that's why a lot of times when I see the aura not really changing, I'll go to the flower essences or I'll go to the the gems to, to, to try to break that up. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to move down. Um, I just want to be careful of time here. Um, 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 um. We can look at today's stress. So we see liver, bacteria, blood sugar. I'm pre-diabetic. That happened when I fell. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Someone told me that can happen with trauma. I, yeah, I went in. They're like, "You're pre-diabetic." I'm like, "I don't eat sugar yeah, or carbs." I don't know. Look, you need to do some work around trauma. I think. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll I'll look at it. We also I want to get to hormones because that is our oh, today. So, um, we can look at hormones. So. I'm going to add the red ones from here and I'm going to add the 600 and above. And that is one thing. Um, my apologies. I'll tell you just one moment. I didn't mention when we were going over um, in the first, but when we have the different uh, ranges that we talked about in the beginning, the red, the green, the yellow, and the red, And we work with the red and the blues on areas that we'd like to focus on. Well, we like to add um, the value 600 and above and 200 and below, because often if you bring those 600, those values that are on the edge of the the red and the ones that are on the, the green that are on the border of the blue, when you get them to the main hold tray and run that analysis, those may show up as high priority. So we don't want to miss anything that might be important. Okay. And um, we can look at digestion. I'm going to look at digestion and um, really quickly because a lot of um, Hormones are, we need our gut to be healthy for production of your hormones. So let's just add all of these in here. And we can look at your body systems, digestive. Intergumentary is always there too, every Again, day. So, you know, you can always, you know, work on just a few things. You don't always have to add a lot of things to the tray. I mean, if you're really finding that certain things 
just don't move, just like take a few and just, you know, work on those and see if you okay. can um, break it down. Okay. Um, and where are organs? Oh, I didn't mean to go into mineral. Sorry, guys. Organs. I'm going to add your eyes. <laughs> Brain looks okay here. We can add your heart. Um, I'm going to add the pancreas just because you talked about your sugar levels. Okay. Um, I guess let's just look at. Oh yeah, it's always out. Well, can cause damage to the tooth. Yep, that can affect all the glands. Yep, exactly, Barbara. That's why I went in here to look at that. Thank you. Um. And. Okay. And spinal energy is another really important area to look in because it's uh, the, your spinal energy is taking everything from your brain stem and it's sending all the messages down your spinal column and then everything goes out from all your nerves. So it shows this is your spinal column as you know in, in the order of your vertebrae. I like to hit high to low so we can see what exactly we're working with. Okay. So I'm just gonna add these reds and the blues and the 600 and above and 200 and below here. And I'm gonna just take a second and look on this chart just to tell you what these little segments mean. So let's see, your top one is L2, which is your lumbar two. And that um, the body connection is appendix, abdomen and thigh. And it harmonizes the spine for cramps, appendicitis, varicose veins, leg pain. And also, yeah. do, do you have leg pain? I have leg pain. And interesting that you are bringing this up too, because uh, I, in my family, uh, in fact, my twin sister just had two years ago, had uh, emergency compression surgery for the spine. But that seems to be like a big deal. And now the doctor is wondering if that's why like my hands aren't working. And So, yeah, so we'll see what comes up. And the emotion connection here excuse me is not seeing a way out old hurts are not released um let's just see and c7 uh is a cervical that's the thyroid gland your shoulder uh -huh. and versa um and again harmonizes the spine for bursitis upper respiratory infection colds and the emotional connection is thinking you are helpless and um c1 is middle ear pituitary gland blood supply to the head um, huh. headache, insomnia, high blood pressure, migraines, chronic fatigue, and dizziness. Yeah. So, um, uh, did I add these? I can't remember. Oh, I did. Okay. Okay. So that's all I'm going to look at right now in, um, the body. We can look at the biofield quickly. And I'm just going to drag the sacred geometry and Saveggio tones in there. I always like to look at uh, the meridian. So I'm going to, I always work with the governing meridian and the conception vessel meridian. And especially here, we'll um, add the reds and the blues. And actually... I did the 600 and above and let's do the 200 and below here. Ooh, where did that go? I just want to make sure I got the first where's I'm looking for GV1 and GV28 if oh there we go. Reason my, I like grabbing the first and last points on the meridian because sometimes, because it this one uh, governing um, was red, I've included all those points. But otherwise, I would just if it was like yellow, I would just add the first and the last point unless kind of like you're guided or your intuition like wants you to add more. Because if you stim stimulate the first and last point, sometimes that'll be enough to get the meridian going. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I'm just gonna throw in the Lung Meridian down there. Um, and then we can look at sacred geometry here and we could add the Torrids and the Fibonacci. Metatron's cube is great for protection guys, especially if you're having a trouble with um, uh, some of those spiritual protections. I'm just gonna mm -hmm. add the red ones in here and the blues. The chakras, I want to add your brow chakra just. Yeah, that's been out like for two weeks and now it's not as much interestingly, but that I know that goes to well, vision. It's, it's not red or blue, but I'm adding it because maybe it has something to do with your eyes. Um, you know, I'm just yeah, it has, it has definitely, it's always been out. And I know that goes to vision, uh, brow mm -hmm. chakra. And your pituitary gland. So, you know, there's a lot of overlap there. Yeah. Um, the Nogiers, I'm going to add A and G always. Uh, those are your universal ones, but I can tell you just, so Nogier A. <laughs> um, has to do with energy, eyes, post-surgery, and wounds. So wow. that would be a good one for you to work with. And okay. um G is the universal one and it has to do with brain function, inflammation, universal frequency. Meridians we did. So veggio tones, I always add 528. This is mm -hmm. um, the frequency for transformation and miracles. And I'm not gonna add the other ones because our tray is adding up. Mm -hmm. And so let's go into my libraries now and see. Or not just my well, my collection of libraries. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so I'm gonna just look at my, whoops. Okay, so this is a hormone that I created. I'm gonna add all these hormones. Hey, Denise, can't you just throw the whole thing in and it would do all yellow, uh, blue, green? Well, I'm would do doing all the colors? 600 and above. So if I grab oh. all the yellow, it would grab all the right. 500 uh, too. Got it. Okay, and I'm going a little fast here, guys. My apologies because we're running low on time and I just wanna grab a few more things. So I wanna grab the 45 essential nutrients and I'm gonna add all of them. And I also wanna look at hydration for you. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So just to show everybody, because we talked about it, I made a master branch hydration. Oh no, that didn't work. Whoopsies. I guess I did something wrong on it. <laughs> so we won't look at that one, <laughs> but I'm going to add the reds and blues here for this hydration. And this has works with a little bit of trauma, so maybe maybe we'll have some luck. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have a like the first one. I release all. Well, this is genetic traumas blocking my hydration, but 
And so for the whole three years, it, I can't seem to get a hand on it. Uh, whenever I do body coat, it always says uh, hydration. It always goes to being dehydrated. Well, there's a lot of different ways we can be dehydrated, right? Right. I mean, we can be drinking tons of water, but our body's just not absorbing it for whatever reason. Exactly. And Denise, this is something that we can buy like an extra library of hydration. Yeah, the, I, these four, my hydration one through four, I created. Um, and yes, you can, um, you can email me. They're not, they haven't been posted yet on the um, website, but um, they would be, they'll, they're available for purchase if you're interested in them. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, you know what they say, there's no mistakes. <laughs> added all the greens. <laughs> now, I want to point this out because some of you, I don't want you to think that there's something wrong with the genius. Um, I see this all the time in women that the genius things will come up and gonads will show up or like here you have like this gland uh, that's found in men. Usually, typically what that means is that there's some energetic disturbance with testosterone. So that's why those show up. And for whatever reason, that frequency is, is a match for it for you. Okay, so I am going to go to the main hold tray now, and I'm gonna begin an analysis. And so what I like to do is um, I will run all the frequencies for one minute. And uh, your thoracic nine is showing up. I'm just gonna look what that is. And are these, does that mean thoracic nine is like the priority out of all of them or, or no? When, because the genius is looking at everything, there are 280 items approximately in the main whole tray. It's looking at them all relation, in, like in relationship to each other. So based on looking at them all in relationship to each other, right now it's showing thoracic nine as, you know, one of, as the high and that's your adrenal glands it's allergies chronic fatigue hypertension hair loss feeling a victim to life or life circumstances hmm. yeah So 39% rectification, that's great because we worked on like over 280 items. I'm gonna rescan. So when we rescan now, we can see, you know, now what's gonna come to the surface. So now it says my energy fields are fully hydrated. So maybe, you know, that there's a reason there that you're not staying hydrated. Pituitary showed up. My organs are fully hydrated. So we're seeing you know, some hits there. I'm just going to run play again for one minute. Gotcha. Here.
Okay, 37%. So again, I'm, I'm happy with that because we're looking at a lot of items. Now I will um, rescan and we'll look at just your highs. And we'll look at those for three, we'll run that for three minutes. Sorry, we're not really having time to run specific libraries on your vision today. Focus a little bit on your hormones. As <laughs> but you never know. And Denise, is, is this how you generally do it? You just, you do the scan, you do the one minute. You Well, first you drop everything of importance into the main hold tray, mm -hmm. and then you do a uh, one minute scan on everything. Yeah, I'll do the one minute scan twice on everything and then on just the highs. Now, if I'm doing it in a regular session and I'm doing less teaching, I mean, I might run, you know, some of these, um, longer than just this period of time but this will be initially how i start i always do the one one um three a rescanning in between and oh, okay. rachel rachel's saying that um the thoracic nine is connected yes it's connected to the adrenal glands so and that can affect hormones absolutely oh okay. my adren adrenals are out a lot And Denise, how often do you do this where you're doing the three minutes? Do you just keep rescanning and running for three minutes a few more times for the highs or? Well, I like to look at the average percent rectification. Um, you know, so I'm happy with 40%. Obviously, if I'm working on a, in a session with someone and, you know, I still have more time, I'm going to make sure I get all areas. It's like if I had more time with you, I would go into maybe look a little bit more deeply in the, into the endocrine system itself or for your eyes look so I might like clear out if I had a good rectification like 55% is great so if I was running a session I might clear out that main hold tray and and add some other areas that I didn't get to to address but let's just go back now and look at your aura because we're getting right on that top of the hour Now, often when you do run a lot of frequencies, sometimes it's still, you're seeing pale colors. That's okay. It's just everything shifting. But we're seeing, you know, that's it. I would just, that's, a, a, you know, again, I would like to see it brighter if I had my druthers, but. I would like to go right now and just run the gems a little bit for you. And now this I would run on a quick balance. So I don't, I wouldn't add it to the main hole tray. And what is that? What does that do? The uh, gems? The Chris, the gems, they just, um, they're really great and they each have their own specific um, qualities to it. I don't have them written down right here, um, but they're really good at helping, uh, you know,
break up stagnant energy and I find a lot of times it will help um, enrich and bring that bright vibrancy to the aura. Uh -huh. And that's a, I think that's something you have to purchase. That's not on the main page, right? I sell this one as well if you're interested. In Sorry. You can email me if you're interested in this library. That one is, okay, it's for sale. Okay, so that was low. So, I mean, if we had a longer session, I would run that longer, but let's just see what it looks like when we run your aura again. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have to wind it up. But how are you feeling? Have you not? Great. Yeah, good. Energy feels good. That's good. And how was, um, I put it in that front tray. Uh, was it your knees? What did you mention? Oh, your hands, oh, what do your yeah. hands feel? Yeah, that's in, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, my right hand, I can make a fist with now. So that's cool. Yeah, uh, my left one is the same, but um, but the right one is much better. Are you righty? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good then. <laughs> right. So, I mean, there's a little bit of a change here. I would uh -huh. still probably, you know, if we had more time, I would run that a little bit longer. And then, you know, perhaps go back to the main hold tray again and run it a little longer for that. Um, you know, again, for your hands, there's other things you could look at, like muscles you can look at um, for those that we just didn't have time to get into all those specific areas today. And Denise, last question, how long a day can you do, uh, do genius? Is there a limit or? Well, for anybody that can muscle test or knows the sway test, that's really easy to ask those questions. I would use your muscle testing and ask. Okay. I don't usually use muscle testing when I work in and out of the genius. I just kind of go through my gut on that. But if I were to muscle test, um, it's usually for how long to run a, a session for. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I always do that for each individual, but mm -hmm. I'll do the main. Uh, yes, and I'm just looking at Rachel. Yes, trauma causes fear affecting pancreas leading to diabetes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a strong sense that uh, you need to, with your, you know, with the genius and body code, I, I would work it on trauma for you. I think that's probably the piece that um, you need to in trauma's not in your the library the main library I, yeah there are libraries i mean i'm happy to go through whichever ones i have on that um you okay. know, i would also look at you could look at a tra traumatic brain injury as well yeah you know i ha you know i have um um a brain library i i tended to look at it but we don't really have time for it today <laughs> Okay, so I hope, um, do we answer everybody's questions? How can we share the screen from the iPad to the client? Same as we had in this demo. Okay, well quickly, I am able to share it right now because um, I have the MacBook Air that has the M1 chip and that's really important information guys, only ones that have the M1 chip and I think it's like the last two generations of it and then you can have, um, download the genius app right onto it and it works great if not you can um there's a reflector or claire has a con question um, I, 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 sh I share my ipad direct to zoom just with a, a little um wire that connects the macbook to or yeah, it's oh, a screen share thing well, maybe so, you want to uh, send that Amazon link or whatever cord that is that you use. Maybe that yeah. would be helpful um, to show what we're... Um, it's so, just within Zoom itself. Okay, so did we get everybody's questions? I hope so. If I missed anybody, you're welcome to email me at Denise at Inside Health Apps, and I'm happy to answer your questions. And um, Ruth? I hope that you've enjoyed this and you've learned something and you're feeling a little better. 
I did. Thank you so much. It's great. I feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So anyway, until next Thursday, we will see you again. And um, everybody have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm.